All right, this is going to be a hell of a program that I got in store for you guys today. Celebrating my birthday, I got a new present. Well, I got many new presents, but specifically today I bought a very grand present to celebrate my 40th birthday. And uh, we're here to celebrate. I got the little cigarellos here. Uh, cigarette size cigars from Cuba. This is a brand that I like. This is uh, Cohiba from Havana, Cuba. Normally, if you ever see me smoke, I'm smoking uh, the Romeo and Juliet. But I also like the Cohiba as well. And uh, yeah, I like I like Cuban cigars. You don't see me smoking cigars often. You won't see me smoking cigars often. I just don't do it that often. When I do do it, it's because I'm celebrating something. I kind of split up my life into different things that I like to call missions. So whenever I complete a new mission, mission accomplished, so to speak, then I'll light up a cigar to celebrate that occasion. I remember the first time that I actually smoked a cigar for the first time in my life. I was, was I 21? I was either 22 or 23 years of age. I went with the military, the United States Air Force to be exact, to the UAE. I was at a military base there called Al Dafra Air Base. It's a joint base that is, you know, uh, half UAE soldiers and half U.S. soldiers. We have our little part of the base where we all congregate together. We have our own housing units and mess hall and things like that. And, uh... I was there for four months at that base and I was a security escort. I worked six days a week, 12 hours a day, and uh, with one day of rest. As busy as I was, it was a very enjoyable job. Sometimes it could get boring because you're just looking at the same shit, so to speak, for about, you know, 12 hours a day, just looking at people working and build stuff for, uh, you see contractors building stuff for us on the base and we're just looking at them to make sure that they don't bring in anything excessive like a bomb or anything that's not supposed to be there. If so, you just call it in, but not like I've ever seen anything. No action was had. Uh, the contractors that were coming from all these Middle Eastern countries that were working on the base building things for us, they were all good people. I made friends with many people. It was just swell people to have anybody build anything for you. And they were good at what they did. So, I called that my first mission. When I was getting ready to be sent home, uh, a day before getting on the plane to come back to Yokota Air Base where I was stationed at the time in 2005, summer 2005 is when I was coming back. Um, I declared that the end of my first mission. Uh, my boy, his name is Charles Goodson. He was stationed at Yokota Air Base with me, and he was my best friend at the time. And he was there uh, with me as a security escort inside of the same unit. Uh, he said, let's go get some Cuban cigars and let's, let's light up and let's uh, celebrate. And I said, it sounds like a plan. Ever since then, I started smoking cigars when I accomplished missions. Missions doesn't have to be anything dangerous. For example, another mission that I did, this may have been my second or third mission. Uh, I made a good friend with somebody on MySpace of all places in 2006. His name is Mark Dwayne. He's a magazine owner. A magazine owner out in Birmingham, the second biggest city in the UK. Not only did he own this magazine called Street Cred Magazine, look it up on Google. The guy is also a great, a hell of an R&B artist. And, um, okay, so that's that. He owns the magazine. He's an R&B artist, and he's a DJ, and he's a club 
uh, event organizer slash promoter. So he just did everything in nightlife and entertainment. And he was so big out in the UK. He found me on MySpace and said, hey, listen to my music. Give it a play. Usually I don't listen to other people's music. No, when other people sent their music to me, which was hundreds to thousands of people, and they sent it to my email address and contacted me on MySpace and said, listen to my music. I really didn't listen to their music because I have a very particular ear as a DJ myself on what I like to listen to. So I would go out and I choose what I deem as good music. But for whatever reason, this guy said, listen to my music and I listened to it, uh, breaking my own trend of me choosing instead of them choosing me. And it turned out that I absolutely love this guy's music. So I started spinning it in the clubs here in Tokyo. And uh, I told this guy, listen, I want to come over to the UK. I'm coming over. Uh, I got the ticket. I'm coming over uh, Christmas time of 2008. Got the plane ticket, went over there. He booked a big club event for me at this now defunct club called Club Barracuda in Birmingham, downtown. Uh, the place could hold a capacity of about a thousand people. And uh, he booked me for that event for Boxing Day, which is December 26, 2008. Greatest, greatest club event that I've ever DJed at. Is it? It was one of them. Maybe, possibly the the best DJ event that I've ever DJed at. I enjoyed that one so much. I enjoyed being in uh, Birmingham for about three days. Enjoyed being in London for four days in that time frame. That was a mission because that was an accomplishment of me doing my first international DJ gig, successful DJ gig. So. I was in Harrods, London, Knightsbridge, and I bought uh, a Romeo and Juliet, another one. That was the first one that I smoked at Al Doffer in 2005. Bought the same one again and smoked that on the last day that I was in London to celebrate that occasion. So these things in my life are called emissions. I survived until 40 years of age. That's an accomplishment in my life now, today. Being alive for 40 years, God bless me so much. I should be sleeping in my grave right about now, but God has his eye out for me. Whether you believe him or not, as beyond the point, it's all fate-based. I believe in him, and I believe he's kept me protected for this long, and I think he's going to protect me for 40 more years. So... This is for 40 years of life. This lighting up this cigar is a festival celebrating life of being here for 40 years. Man, the tears are about to come down, but I'm going to hold them in. I feel so good, so blessed to be here. We're going to light this one up. I usually smoke them bigger than this, but I don't know. I just kind of want to smoke it and get it done with in one session. So I got these thin ones, the cigarellos. So let's let's go ahead and light this one up. Let me toast it real quick. There we go. Get that smoke going. Now we're going to get the double smoke going. With the Hakushu single malt whiskey. Got some cigarette on my on my tongue there. Let's go ahead and have a pour of this Hakushu inside of my Hakushu glass from the distillery. That dry paper getting stuck on my tongue. I'm only going to do a little 20 millimeter pour because right before I turned on the camera, I was recording some other stuff. Already did a whiskey review. Not over this one, over something else. But... We're keeping this episode Japan themed today, so I'm smoking the 
this cigar, which obviously doesn't come from Japan, but I'm drinking the uh, the Japanese whiskey. This one is Japanese nature and sensibilities inside of a glass. Very floral like. I love this whiskey. You can see that I'm getting very close to the bottom there. Only about probably 15% left of that bottle. So we're going to drink this one today. Here's a toast to me. Being 40 years of age. Kampai. Cheers. Salute. Mm. All right. Now let's get on with this special gift. Let's go ahead and pull that thing off before it becomes cumbersome, cumbersome while I'm trying to smoke. I think I'm going to add a little bit of water to this whiskey right here. So let me get my little pipette here and uh, dip it, dip it inside of the water. And let's try that again. Messing up big time here. Gonna pour just a little bit of water inside of my glass. There we go. And here we go for the big unveiling, the big reveal. I got a special present today. Quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Rolex Explorer 2, the black dial, along with my uh Royal, royal purple bow tie, making me look good because I am royalty here in Japan. And uh, I bought a gift befitting for a king, especially one in Japan. And that is this one right here. This is a Grand Seiko watch. My very first Grand Seiko watch. So now I own three different luxury watches it's i got into luxury watches a little bit late in the game but glad that i did two years ago i bought my first one which was an omega Speedmaster, my grill watch not too expensive for that one but it's still it cost enough the price is currently going up slowly on that last year in 2022 i bought the rolex explorer 2 and I bought this one maybe five to six months ago. And this definitely it was in the summertime of 2022. Don't remember the month exactly. And now celebrating my 30th. 30th. I wish. You see, you see, this is how old and see now I'm getting. I'm thinking I'm 30 years old. Celebrating my 40th birthday and 20 years in Japan, mind you. I'm being fed it. I'm fedding myself right now. This is a celebration of my life. I bought this brand new Grand Seiko. And this is not the one that you think, but this is a very special one. So let's go ahead and open up the top of this. The packaging is real nice on this one. It's a big box. Lots going on here. Go ahead and take this out. Let me show you the things that are inside of here. Now we have a card inside of this one. This is like a kind of like an extended warranty. This is maintenance support for eight years. There's some information on the back that I don't want to show you guys, but this is an extra big card that's bigger than a credit card. It's like almost double the size of a credit card. And there's lots of information on the back. This one is called maintenance support for up to eight years. As long as I show this card anytime within the eight years since the purchase date, I can get a very highly discounted servicing on my watch. So normally if you get a Grand Seiko serviced in Tokyo, Japan, it's going to cost 70,000 Japanese yen for that servicing. But with this card, it's going to cost something like uh, maybe 20,000 Japanese yen for that servicing.
just as long as I have this card for up to eight years. So let's consider that eight years from today. I can't even do the math. If it's 2023, eight years is going to be 2031. So there's that. Let me put that card back inside of here. So that that sits here inside of this maintenance support thing and this sits at the bottom of the box you got your Grand Seiko spring drive operating instructions uh, this is I guess this is registration for the GS9 club I'm not going to show that to you because I need to use that to register for myself this is my original sales receipt. The price of this watch in Japanese yen is 759,000 Japanese yen. So that goes inside of this little clear envelope that says Wako. I bought this from the uh, pretty much the Seiko building, which is called the Wako building. And you have your actual warranty card inside of here, your limited warranty. I don't want to show that off because I got my serial numbers and things on there. And you have some other paperwork in which I don't know what all this stuff is, but a lot of paperwork inside of this box. All right. So, before I go ahead and show this one off on camera, my memory card on the camera is telling me I only got one minute left. So, I'm getting ready to switch out the memory cards. And uh, I'll be right back. The moment you guys have been waiting for. The star of the show. You got your... This was the first box that I've already taken it out of. Then you have your second box wrapped inside of this washi paper. And it looks like I have it upside down. You have your harder box here that says Grand Seiko GS on there. The back side, it just says box made in Japan. This is the profile view of this box. It's navy blue with some gray inside the middle. And you just lift it up like so. And the first thing that you see inside of here, when you have it lifted up, you have the Grand Seiko logo on this nice uh, gray matte filling pillow. You have a cloth on top of the watch. And... On sits this black pillow is the watch itself. I have some links taken out, but three links taken out, but actually I need to take out another link so that it fits my wrist even better. And there's nothing else inside the box there. Let's put this here. There goes the box one more time. This watch right here, very nice pillow. This one has two names, and it all depends on where you are inside of the country. No, sorry. Let me take that back. This all depends on where you are inside of the world, okay? If you're inside the United States and or any territory that is outside of Japan, Europe, Germany, uh, elsewhere, this watch is going to be called the SBGA. Let me make sure that I'm getting this right. Let me make sure that I'm getting this right. Because I do not want to mess this up. So this one is called the SBGA413. AKA is called the Shunbun. Shunbun. S-H-U-N. B-U-N and it has the nice cherry blossom dial to it if you are living intra-Japan instead of being called the SBGA413 
413, the number is actually different. The number is the SBGA 443. So in Japan, 443. Elsewhere in the world, 413. But it's exactly the same watch. I don't know why Japan does things like this. You take a Japanese car, for example. They give a car a very nice international foreign name. For example, there was a popular model of Honda cars here in Japan that was called the Honda Inspire. Inspire is an American word. It's English. We all know what it means. It's a great word. It sounds like a great name for a car. So there's the Honda Inspire. It's a luxury sedan that I really love in Japan. And when they brought this car over to the States, these uh, 2000 models of Honda Inspire, they renamed it a Honda Accord. So it's the same. I mean, they're both English names, but why do you have to change it from Inspire to Accord? Why can't it just be Inspire all over the world? So with this watch, why isn't it just called the 443 all over the world? Why do they have two separate names for it? I don't know. But this is the watch right here. The reason I like this is it's very lightweight. The whole thing, the casing and the bracelet is made out of titanium. Beautiful dial here. If you look at it in the right lighting, it's going to show up as pink. If you look at it under a certain type of lighting, it might just show up as uh, silverish. But right, it could go from silver to to pink like a cherry blossom. So that's why I like this one very much. It just has a very unique Japanese look to it. And uh, this is part of the 62 GS line. This is a heritage piece of Grand Seiko's collection, their heritage collection. Like I said, this is about 750,000 Japanese yen. And USD, that's a little bit over 6,000 USD, I believe. And in, in this day and age with how much the yen is compared to the USD. In an all-perfect world where $1 equals 100 US. Uh, D, this would probably be $7,500. As this is my birthday, January 4th, the price is what it is now, 750,000 Japanese yen. But to let you guys know, come January 23rd, 2023, this watch right here, in all of Grand Seiko's lineup, all of their watches, they're going to be raising the price 10% on all watches. So uh, how much is that going to be after? Let me see if I can find out real quick. Let's just put 750 Japanese yen plus 10%. So... With the 10% added on come January 23rd, this is going to be uh, 825,000 Japanese yen, which is a, a pretty nice uh, steep price increase. So if you're planning on buying a Grand Seiko, I would recommend that you do it now before this price jumps up. Anything else I wanted to say about this? This has a three-day power reserve. You have the power reserve uh, limiter, not limiter, uh, display, actually displayed on the dial. So you can see that it's kind of ran out now, but I'll charge it up momentarily and I'll get it all the way up to a full max charge. Um, this has a date window inside of here. The Grand Seiko logo, the GS is written in gold. All in all, it's a beautiful watch. The main thing about this, the most beautiful point, is that this is a complete bezel-less watch. There is no bezel on this watch, no steel bezel. The whole thing is just an extended sapphire crystal glass that's coming, that's coming out of the case with no bezel, steel bezel wrapped around that. That's what makes it unique. 
Very lightweight, very nice. It got this nice dark titanium look to it with uh, polished end links in the center. You got your deployant clasp, square Grand Seiko deployant, deployant clasp here. It just says GS on the back. It says GS on the... Uh, I'm at a loss of words right now. On the crown. And you can see the profile is very thin. And... This is not going to show up on camera. It is an open case back. Absolutely beautiful watch. Let's go ahead and take off the Explorer 2. And even though that this one doesn't really fit, I got to take out some more links. I'm just going to put it on just to show you guys. It looks really good on my wrist. Very professional. Very lightweight. So this is what this looks like here on my wrist with my suit. Beautiful. There's a big, big space inside of there. So they give you a lot of extra links to play around with. Uh, so even if you're a bigger guy, there's so many extra links inside of here. Let's just say it. If you're a fat guy, this this will fit you. So very nice, very nice. Uh, my wrist is, what is my wrist? Six inches which is pretty pretty skinny but yeah there we go all right let's go ahead and take this off again real quick absolutely amazing watch i'm gonna read some things off the internet for you real quick it says that uh launched in 1967 the 62 gs was grand Seiko's first watch which mounted automatic with a mounted automatic movement this timepiece gained popularity for its striking design featuring a mirrored multi-sided case and wide dial opening which was achieved with bezel-free construction and grand seiko's signature zeratsu polishing technique so this one has the zeratsu polishing technique done to it all done completely by hand Pure and refined, the 62GS is our treasured classic. All right, and a little bit more. It's just kind of repeating what it said originally. All right, it makes for a clean, slim, easy to read, and comfortable watch. I would say it's very comfortable because this feels like, this feels twice as light. It feels twice as light as a steel piece a full steel watch so there's that i don't think this is going to bother you being on the wrist all day there is other watches in this lineup so this one is commemorating spring but also they made a similar watch to this one that commemorates summer that has a green dial that's a high beat movement. This one is a spring drive. Then they have an autumn watch, which is also high beat. Uh, that's a blue dial. And then they have the winter version, which looks exactly like this. But instead of the pink dial, it's like a kind of light brownish dial that's supposed to be like Japanese snow. Yeah, under the right lighting. It's gray, but it can also look brown for the winter dial. And it's supposed to be snow. And that one is also a spring drive, just like this one. So inside of this series, you got four different watches. The price points are a little bit different. The spring and the winter watch with the spring drive are the exact same price. And the summer and autumn versions are about 50,000 Japanese yen cheaper than the spring and winter ones because they have the high beat movement inside instead of the spring drive. So it says that these four different watches are the embodiment of Japanese nature and its artistic sensibilities. In Japan, each of these four seasons of the year 
is experienced in six phases and all have their own distinct characters. So Japan and all kind of, instead of saying that they celebrate four seasons, they kind of celebrate 24 seasons. Each one of the four seasons that we know inside of America is kind of broken down. There will be six parts of one season for Japanese people, if it's making sense what I'm saying, creating 24 different unique seasons of the year for Japanese people. It says the subtle changes from one season to the next bring the nature of time ever closer to our senses. And that's pretty much the end of that. But this is the watch. I'm so glad to have this. This will be my one and done Grand Seiko. If you are going to own any Grand Seiko watch, you need one that celebrates the brand like a flagship watch. And I think that this is the flagship watch. Even more so than the, uh, what did they call the white one? The snowflake. This is even more Japanese than that with the cherry blossoms, which are very unique to Japan. Snowflakes, you got snowflakes all over the world, but the cherry blossom is, I mean, you got cherry blossoms in other places too, but for example, Washington, D.C., but these are trees that have kind of been donated to America from Japan. It's a very Japanese, it's just a very Japanese thing. The Japanese celebrate that one week out of the year where the cherry blossoms bloom in early spring by sitting underneath the trees with the cherry blossom petals falling on you and you're having a drink of beer or whiskey or whatever your your vice drink of choice is underneath the trees with friends enjoying life, having a celebration of life. This is a celebration of that. And especially for me, 40 years of age, I got this one to celebrate. It just feels nice just shaking this. You can feel that rotor just going around inside the back and it's a beautiful case back with the Grand Seiko Lion logo on the back of the sapphire glass. Absolutely amazing watch. So that's this. Let me go ahead and light up one last time. I'll see if I have some closing thoughts to share with you guys, but pretty much that is the watch. That's all I really need to show you guys. I can show it off in more details. Closing out this video real quick. The case size of this watch is 40 millimeters in diameter. And uh, the caliber is a 9R65 hybrid spring drive technology movement, automatic. Uh, 30 joules, 72 hours, three day power reserve. And the accuracy is rated at plus one second a day, plus 15 seconds per month. So pretty good. Reference number, like I said, outside world, SBGA413 in Japan, SBGA443. Uh, this was available from February 1st of 2022. And it's available worldwide from Grand Seiko Boutiques. And it's a non-limited edition watch. Very nice. I can't believe I got this watch. I'm starting to really close down my collection now. And there's not too many more things I want out there. I got a Rolex. I got an Omega. Got a Grand Seiko. I got a couple of old vintage Groons from 60 years ago. I'm very happy where I'm at. And uh, my horological journey is kind of becoming very complete at this point in time and I don't see much reason to get much anything else but there's a few more watches that I desire whether or not I buy them is uh, haven't made that decision yet I can live with them I can live without them so there's that but the ones that I have now 
they make me feel very content at what I have. So I'm very happy about all of that. Anyways, final smoke here. I thank you guys for watching, celebrating with me, uh, listening to my stories. This is a complete celebration of life. This watch is like, it's very synonymous with that, with this cherry blossoms. Because once the cherry blossoms fall off the trees, that's when all the greenery on the trees start to bloom. And the tree really starts to come to life. So I'm starting to come alive at 40 years of age. I thank you guys for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe, because there will be more about this watch and my other watches in future videos. And uh, let's go ahead and close it out there. Salute to you wherever you may be out inside the world. And as always, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy.